Welcome to module three. In this module, we're going to be talking all about exponentials and logarithms. And we're going to start with exponentials. What do I mean when I say an exponential? It's something of that form over here. We got this a to the x. Great. Well, basically, x is our variable, as always. It might not be x, it could be a y, but it's our variable. And our variable is the exponent in this case. What we have, a, is the base. It's just a number. And that number, as we can see, could be a positive number, uh, it could be a fraction, it could be a decimal, technically it could be a negative number. I didn't show that case here, but it could be. It's just a is some whole number raised to an exponent which is itself a variable. But how do these look? Well, if we have a positive number, a positive number that is greater than 1, we're going to get what is known as exponential growth. Basically, a function that grows and gets, grows faster and faster. You can think x, again, is the exponent. So when x is 1, you just get the same thing back. When it's 2, you're squaring it. Q 3, you're cubing it. So our number is going to grow very rapidly. And if we look at this graph, I actually compare the different ones. What we've got is uh, x, or 2x and 3x. And we can see 3x grows much faster. The bigger the base, the faster it's going to grow. But if we get a number that's between 0 and 1, what we actually get is exponential decay. We're getting less of the number over time. And that's what this is showing right here. And in this case, the decay rate, again, will depend on the fraction. But what we find is the smaller the fraction, or the smaller the decimal, the faster it will decay. So that's when you're looking at 0.9 versus 0.5x. You can see the 0.5x is going to drop faster. So that's what we mean by exponentials. Something, a base number, that's a constant, raised to some exponent, that's a variable. And a variable might also be like 2x, something like that. We're going to see a bunch of cases of solving those later. But we also want to talk about logarithms. And this tends to confuse a lot of people because you look at the logarithm, it's a button on your calculator, you might have heard of it before, but what does it even mean? What is it used for? The main thing to keep in mind is an exponential and a logarithm are very, very related. In fact, what do I have here? I got log to the base a of x equals y. What does that even mean? I mean, this, yeah, this is showing us over here. It's explaining it. But again, I'm going to try and give it in more detail here. What do we got? It, I said it's the same as this. a to the y equals x. Well, it is. A logarithm, what it's asking us to do is what does our base, our a, need to be raised to? What exponent do we need to put a to in order to be get x? If I want x, how do I make a into x? That's why this one is showing that very nicely. What do we got? Log to the base 2 of 64. So what power does 2 have to be put to to get 64? Well, they're counting it out on their fingers or you check on their calculator. If we go 2 to the power of 6, that's equal 64. That's what the logarithm is all about. What power do I have to raise a? So what, and that's what y is. What does power does a have to be raised to to make it equal to x? That's what the logarithm is all about. So that's hopefully going to at least let you know what it is. But I also want to talk about a couple special cases, so-called special logarithms, or mainly kind of confusing ones. Because you might see these logarithms, and I said normally you're going to have log to the base a of x. There's always a base. But there's a few cases where you might not see the base. These so-called special or common logarithms. In fact, if you look at your calculator, you probably have a log button that doesn't have a base. It's already breaking the very first rule I told you. It's got to have a base. Well, if we ever see just log, oops, if I could spell log would help. But if we ever just see log of, say, I don't know, x. It's implied that that's base 10. That's just a common thing in math that it's known if the base isn't written, it's base 10. Or someone screwed up and didn't write the base. But more than likely, if the base is not there, or if you're using your calculator and using log, that's log to the base 10. But it's worth noting that this base can be anything. It can be 2, 3, 10, a billion, 1.4762781. It can be anything we want. And there's a very common base that's used. Uh, the exponential function, e, our e function, 
which is a very important number in math and science. It's a never-ending number, just like pi is the one with infinite digits, e is also. We can round it off to 2.72 for our purposes. It technically keeps going on forever, but this is a very useful number in math and science. And so, we often have log... Wow, I don't like those zeros, or the O's. Log to the base e is a very common one. And maybe we'll use a z in this case. Log to the base e. Well, this gets its own special representation because it's used so often. If we have log to the base e, that's the same as saying ln of our variable. So if you see ln, it means log to the base e. If you see just log, it's log to the base 10. Both of these should be on your calculator. They're very common ones to use. We're going to use them in the module and Hopefully, again, this will get you started for Module 3, and I will see you throughout it.